for watching. I'm David Kinder. This week at Otterbein, students discuss some of their favorite Olympic moments. The men's basketball team postseason fate comes down to Saturday's game, and some of OTV's very own students receive very big awards. But first, we take a look at one Otterbein student who wasn't afraid to take action. Last week, Anna Schiffbauer became one of the few people who can say that they filed a lawsuit against their own university. Schiffbauer is trying to get Otterbein police to release records. Ever since the Otterbein Security Department changed to a police department in 2011, Otterbein student media has had a difficult time getting OPD to release records like Westerville police had done for years. For one Otterbein student, senior Anna Schiffbauer, who's a psychology and business administration major, it reached a breaking point last week when she filed a lawsuit against Otterbein University. There are some, there are some bills in the legislature right now um, that could result in a bill, um, that could result in a law being passed um, that would require private um, universities, police forces to release records. Um, and the lawsuit, the filing, is really, um, it's just another way that things might change, that um, there might be a, um, you know, more public awareness uh, around this issue of access to public records. The debate over policy has lasted for three years now. The university states that since it's a private school, it does not have to release records. For Schiffbauer, the breaking point came last year. Then there was another incident where um, a student was taken from this building um, and, you know, we didn't have any access to those records. We didn't have any way of knowing um, what had happened. This is not the first time this has happened at a school. At Elon University in North Carolina, the state legislation came through to change the law. The case will not be heard in court until next fall, but for Schiffbauer, ideally it happens quicker. Ideally, the legislation would come through and we dismiss the suit. Um, but if the legislation doesn't go through and the Supreme Court decides to hear it, ideally, obviously, that the court would rule in our favor for me. OTV's very own John Bazika and Josh Overholzer received some exciting news last week about their recent entries into the Broadcasting Education Association competition. Alicia Lawson has more on the story. John Bazika and senior Josh Overholzer will both be receiving awards through the Broadcast Education Association. Both entered different categories and were able to come out in the top three. They have a sports play-by-play -play category with BEA, so I picked one of the games that I felt I did better in and I submitted a piece from the end of the Muskingum basketball game and came in second. While Josh took second place in the radio sports play-by-play, -play, John was able to achieve first place with his radio sports story. I just feel honored that we were able to get a couple kids to get picked into another prestigious award like this. The two will be traveling to Las Vegas to accept their awards and learn about some new technologies in the industry. The big thing is NAB Trade Show, which is really cool. All the latest gadgets are there and new technologies and TV, radio. It just I got to go last year and your mind will just be blown with all the technology they had there. John and Josh both agree that they would not be able to achieve the success without the opportunities Otterbein has provided. One of the best things about Otterbein is you can get involved and get hands-on experience from day one. A lot of bigger schools you have to wait until you're a junior. Um, and I was calling a sporting event my third week here my freshman year. So all that experience really helped to get me to where I was at so that I had the chance to place in awards my junior year and my senior year. The award ceremony will take place in April and will include winners from all over the country. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think as being like a sophomore that I would be able to achieve something like that because it's just, you know, you come to a school like Otterbein and you go up against bigger schools and you don't expect that a mini D3 college would be able to compete with the likes of a Maryland or an Arizona State, which is like the Cronkite School of Broadcasting. So it's really just not only an honor for us, but like an honor for our whole program. Alicia Lawson, This Week at Otterbein. Students interested in applying for a job or looking for an internship should head over to the Campus Center on Tuesday the 25th for an event put on by the Career and Professional Development Department. Around 30 different organizations will be there to discuss possible jobs and internship opportunities for students interested in nonprofit organizations. The fair will kick off at 3 p.m. in the Campus Center and last until 5. Head on over to learn more about future career options. 
Next Thursday, a health and safety fair will be held in the Campus Center. This fair is available to all students and staff. Representatives will be there to answer questions as well as vendors and companies from around the area. Appointments are still available for the Mount Carmel Mobile Mammograph Unit. The event will take place from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Interested students should attend. We're going to take a quick break here on this week, but when we return, Alicia is going to come back and tell us about the upcoming arts and entertainment events. Where do you think you're going? Is your body holding you back? I want to go running. Not with that knee or not. I'm fine. Negative. Your bones and joints can say no at any age. <laughs> with that shoulder, you're going to pick up that trick. Really? Keeping you from working, playing, or just plain moving. That's not a... Pick her up, what do you say? Yet a lot of people who live with pain fight back. Use your head, save your back. My pride, my rules. And regain their lives. You gotta be kidding me. Whoa. I'm going running. I'm going running. I got to see this. Go on, pick it up. Fight for your mobility. Find your own inspiration at anationinmotion.org. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Come on. I'll take it from here. Welcome back. I'm Alicia Lawson with Arts and Entertainment. 2013 Music Performer of the Year, Jason Lavadier, will be here Friday, February 21st for a Wing and Sing event held in the Den. Jason is not only a musician, but a comedian as well. Come on out to the open mic night from 8 p.m. to 10 to join in on some food, laughs, and entertainment. The Olympics are slowly winding down, but Grace and I talked with a few students to get their thoughts on the events and some of their favorite moments. My name's Grace. And I'm Alicia. And you're watching AG Tag Team. Yeah, you are. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk to some people about the Olympics. Have you been watching Grace? I haven't. No? Unfortunately. I watched some uh, some slope style skiing last night. How was that? It, it was pretty good, you know? yeah. Pretty exciting. I, I could never do that. But no, other than that, not really. So maybe if you can catch me up on it. Yeah. Let's go let's go talk to some some students. Have you been watching the Olympics at all? Yeah, a little bit. What's your favorite event? Snowboarding. Really? Why is that? Because snowboarding is one of the most uh, just challenging kind of things. Um, because you have to be very good at what you do, as well as have that flair for the audience to get the gold medal. I'm a big fan of the ice dancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know any moves? No. No. Okay. I just I just watch. I really I just. You know, it's such a beautiful sport. They're so graceful, and uh, you know, it's it's cool seeing your country bring home the gold. I love curling. Can I just say, yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, I enjoyed the snowboarding half pipe. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Is Sean White in that or no? Well, he didn't do so well this year. He didn't even medal. Sad. Yolo flip didn't work out. You know, it happens sometimes. It happens. It happens. Well, thank you, Jake. Oh, well, I watched the opening ceremonies. How was it? Tell us a little bit about it. How'd wow. you feel? I felt great, um, you know, especially those little dancers that are like, oh, work it, yeah, like the whole time. Mm -hmm. I like yeah, it. Yeah, they're inspiring. All right. So, great. so uh, we learned a lot about some uh, favorite sports for the Olympics: some ice skating, some curling. Yeah, and you know, the Olympics is always a good time waster. Always good for procrastinating on the homework or doing your homework while watching it. So, a lot of students here enjoying the Winter Olympics. So. That's it for your AG Tag Team. I'm Alicia. And I'm Grace. And we'll catch you next time. From campus events to sporting events, let's see what the upcoming days are bringing us on this week's community calendar. That's all the time we have for arts and entertainment, but when we return, John will, 
John will update us on both the men's and women's basketball teams, as well as a retiring head coach. All the preparation, the training, it all comes down to this. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. We have a job to do out here today. Some people think it's about muscle, but it's really about heart. A lot of heart. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work is going into this. what it feels like to be part of a team, a winning team, the action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Hello, I'm John Bazika here with the Cardinal Sports Report. Well, after over 40 years of coaching here at Otterbein, head men's and women's track and field coach Dave Lehman has decided to retire. Lehman, who has lived in Westerville his whole life, attending high school in the Ville in the 1960s and graduating from Otterbein in the 1970s, felt it was simply time to leave. I had a chance to sit down with Lehman on Wednesday and talk about his career. I wanted to know first from Lehman what he felt his legacy was here at Otterbein. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I think um, hopefully over that period of time obviously come into contact with an awful lot of students and hopefully been of um, some good influence on them and you know showing through example I guess the, the way that I feel life should be lived and the part that athletics plays in that and so forth and, and we've had some great athletes and been able to win some championships but to me probably the more important thing is what kids have been able to do once they leave here. To Lehman, Otterbein is not just another job or chance to coach. It means more. You know, it's, it's your life and to, you know, when you look at the coaching profession and the number of coaches that move around from school to school or job to job, I couldn't see that. I mean, you know, this, this is it. You know, Otterbein, Otterbein is where I am and that's, that's where I uh, love being and, and wouldn't want to move anywhere else for that. To Lehman, what has made his Cardinal experience great is not just his experiences, but also the relationships he has built. I think it's the, it's the loyalty and the long-term people that really, you know, give an organization like Otterbein the good feel that you have and make it worth being here. And when I asked Lehman what advice he has to give to the coaches just beginning their career, his answer was this. It's a crazy profession when your happiness depends on the performance of an 18, 19 year old kid. And, and if you allow it to get to that point, it certainly does. And so I think for me, what has kept things on an even keel is, you know, um, faith in God and, uh, and support of family and things like that. So that, you know, if we have a bad year, a bad stretch, um, we can get through that pretty easily, you know. And, and uh, when we have the good times, yeah, th those are fun. When you, when you win, it's always fun, but, uh, but the main purpose is, is how we're influencing and, and hopefully having positive effects on, on the students that go through here. Lehman may be leaving, but he still plans to come back for home meets and still be visible within the Cardinal community. While winter may finally be coming to an end, snow and the cold temperatures will be leaving, and spring and baseball is set to arrive here at the Vine. Last year, the Baseball Nine made it to the OAC Championship game in the OAC Tournament before losing to Mount Union in a heartbreaker 5-4. With the team getting set for the 2014 season, I sat down with senior Cardinal pitcher Alex Lake on WOBN to talk about the upcoming season and how the team looks thus far in training. The team is uh, showing some odd experience, actually. You know, we have a lot of young guys, but they're experienced young guys. We had a lot of freshmen who played last year. Um, and we have some transfers coming in that have played. So it's not like they're transferring in because they didn't play. They're transferring in because this is where they want to be. So we're to the point right now where, with all this going on, that the team looks confident. And we're probably farther along than we ever could have imagined. 
because of the experience that some of the guys have brought in right off the bat. The Tandon Cardinal will be playing their first game next Wednesday the 26th. They will travel to Chillicothe to play a doubleheader against Ohio Christian at Payne Stadium. If you can't make it out to the game, you can hear part two of the doubleheader on WOBN. David Kinder will go solo and have the call. Pre-game is set for 3:15. The Otterbein women's basketball team suffered their seventh loss in a row at the hands of John Carroll Wednesday night. The ladies from University Heights won 90-78 and with the win swept the Cardinals this season within the OAC. OTV's Jacob Barker has more. The Lady Cardinals played their final home game of the season against the Blue Streaks of John Carroll University. The Lady Cardinals trying to stay in the hunt for their 30th consecutive OAC tournament berth, but tonight was not the case as they fell behind 40-28 at the half. However, the Cardinals went on a 21-10 run in the second half and were down 61-59 with just eight minutes remaining. And with 2.31 remaining and the Cardinals down by five, the comeback seemed to be a possibility. But the Blue Streaks took advantage of three straight offensive rebounds with less than two minutes remaining to pull away 90-78. Leading the way for the Blue Streaks, it was none other than the OAC's leading scorer, Missy Spahar, with 24 points. Meanwhile, junior Tabitha Piper led Otterbein with her 11th double-double this season, going for 20 points and 13 rebounds over her 34 minutes of action. Jacob Barker, This Week at Otterbein. With the loss, the women's team fell to 7-17 overall with a 3-14 conference record. They stand at last in the OAC right now, and with the loss, they were eliminated from the OAC tournament. They will play this Saturday in Tiffin against Heidelberg. The women defeated Heidelberg in mid-January at the Reich 64-55. They will look to get a win this Saturday and finish the season on a strong note. Tip-off for that game is set for 3 p.m. While the struggle on the hardwood seems to be a theme this winter at Otterbein, the men's team lost on Wednesday night in University Heights to John Carroll 72-55. This is also their seventh straight loss in a row. The men never led the Blue Streaks Wednesday night and were never really within striking distance. Junior Jake Hollinger, who totaled 11 points in the 17-point win, led the Blue Streaks. Second-year head coach Todd Adrian has his team at 4-20 overall and 3-14 within the OAC going into Senior Day this Saturday against Heidelberg. This game is more than just Senior Day, though. It's also a win-and-you-get-in situation for the Cards. If the Cardinals defeat the Student Princes Saturday at the Reich Center, they will lock the eighth seed in the OAC tournament, and who they will play in the first round is yet to be determined. The Cardinals defeated Heidelberg in mid-January, 81-77. If you can't make it out to the game, you can catch all of the action streaming live in high definition right here on OTV. Jacob Barker and Elijah Gonzalez will have the call. Pre-game is set for 7 p.m., tip-off for 7.30. So, David, Hopefully they can pack the Reich on Saturday. The student section needs to be out there. That is a big game for that Cardinal team. Yeah, get a crowd like how we had at the Capitol game be a great. few weeks ago. Get out there, support Otterbein as That'd they're making great. the push for the OAC tournament for the second straight Certainly. year. Certainly. Well, that's all the time we have on this week's show. On behalf of Alicia and John and the entire crew, I'm David Kinder. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.